<laughs> oh no, this was really not nice. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, I did uh, pretty much all the things that you are not supposed to be doing with belay devices because they wanted to figure out what are the possible cases where they might fail. And I found quite a few surprises. Whoa! That was unexpected. This video is a follow-up to the physics of Grigri video that I did, and it will build on top of what I explained there. So if you haven't seen that one, I highly recommend to watch it first. So, let's get started. I will be mainly focusing on assisted belay devices, however, since their functioning is built on top of the classical tube, let's understand the physics of this one first. Okay, let's start with the case where both strands of the rope are parallel to each other and I am pulling on the load strand. In this case, the belay device will do nothing. The rope will be simply running over the carabiner. Now imagine me pulling these strands apart. As you might expect, the device will move up. But let's understand this on a deeper level. If we would divide the rope into multiple segments, every segment will be pulling on its neighbor. However, at the point where the rope starts to curve, these vectors are not in a straight line anymore and adding them would create a force towards the center of the arc. And if I would mark all such forces that act on the belay device, this is what we get. And the total sum of all of these vectors would be pointing up. And that's why the device moves up. Okay, another situation. Now I pull the load strand straight down and there is a small angle to the brake strand. As you can see, the left side of the device is trying to climb up, but it doesn't go far. If I increase the angle, now the device will climb higher. And if I increase it even more, now it will climb all the way up until the device will start pushing against the carabiner. And since the carabiner is not going anywhere, it will push back with the same force. Or if we look from other perspective, the carabiner will push back against all of these forces. So the rope is pushing against the device, but now the device will start pushing back on the rope as well, which increases the pressure between the rope and the metal and thus increases the friction. Also, this area of the tube has grooves that allow the rope to sink in, creating even more friction. And as a result of this friction, tension in the rope will also increase. That will make the rope press harder into the carabiner, which will increase the friction in this area as well. So, lots of friction. However, as you can see in this case, I can still pull the rope through. But if I would increase the angle even more, this tilts the device, makes the rope sink into the groove even deeper and also creates another angle where the rope exits. And now I can't pull the rope anymore. So as you can see, the angle of the brake hand plays a huge role in generating friction. As I already showed you in one of my videos where I kept my hand in front of the device, and during the real fall, my hand went into the device Whoa. really Ow. quickly. So let's see what the classical tubes have to do with assisted tubes. If the rope strands are parallel, same as with simple tubes, these devices will also provide no resistance. The rope will simply be running over the carabiner. Which means is that if your brake hand is caught in this position during the fall, your hand and your climber will be in a great trouble. Some devices try to solve this issue, but we will see later how well that worked in practice. Now, if I increase the angle between the strands, the device will start to climb up the rope same as with regular tubes, except that where the regular tubes had a hard stop, assisted tubes have a narrowing gap. And as the carabiner is being pulled into this gap, it starts squeezing the rope between the carabiner and the belay device. And all of the assisted tubers work on the same principle, with an exception of click-up, where the rope first needs to jump out of its initial socket and then it acts the same way as the other devices. 
So at this point, the harder I pull on the load strand, the harder the rope is being squeezed, which on some of the devices results into a complete blocking of the rope. However, others can still slip if the ropes are parallel. And increasing the angle is needed to help the device to completely block. So assisted tubers are very sensitive to this angle. And I personally met a guy who had a ground fall while his belayer was using a click up and his belayer was trying to take out the slack during the fall. Unfortunately, while his hand was moving up, the impact happened and his hand went into the device, the device did not lock and he had a ground fall. That's why new click up, click up plus has this metal piece. Mammut also came with this little add on for the smarter and it's to prevent from such issues. So I wanted to figure out at what angles these devices won't lock. I did a lot of different experiments and quickly realized the complexity of such testing. There was simply too much randomness involved. But in the end I thought, you know what? Wouldn't it be great if the belay device would lock at any angle? So, welcome to my first experiment, where I held my brig hand in the worst position possible and performed a series of incremental drops. And I measured how well the device will perform in a scale from locking instantly to slipping and pulling my hand into the device to, well, you will see. First was click up, and as I expected, it was not locking at all in this configuration. So I tried medium fall, same results, and then I tried a big fall. Ow. And it locked only when my hand was completely sucked in the device. So let's see if ClickUp Plus is an improvement. On small fall, my hand was pulled in the device really hard. So my arm gets sucked in and then it locks. On medium fall, the slippage was already minimal and on a big impact, it was locking instantly. Okay. Next, I tested Black Diamond Pilot. No, it does not lock in this position at all. And on all the falls, my hand was pulled into the device really hard. All right, next was Ederlid Jewel, and this one was a pleasant surprise. It was locking instantly on every single test I tried. Nice, German technologies. So I was expecting similar from another Ederlid device called Giga Jewel. Whoa, fuck me, ow. Ow, this was the worst performance so far. By the way, in all of these tests, I was trying really hard to resist from my hand being pulled into the device. In the real life scenarios, you would probably be not prepared for that. And the things might be much worse. So I highly recommend to not try this. I'm not sure if I want to do the bigger one. Well, let's see, maybe it's gonna lock. I was trying really hard to not die. All right, next one was Mammoth Smart, and on all of my tests, it was slipping a lot before finally locking. So then I tried with the smarter add-on to see if the situation will improve, and yes, the difference was big. Yeah, it locks instantly. Next device I wanted to test is Revo, and this is one of the most innovative designs. Its locking is based on the speed at which the rope is running through the device. Basically, if you pull faster than 4 meters per second, it will lock. So let's see how well it performs on my test. Oh no, this was really not nice. <laughs> So the issue with this is that it's like a pulley, it's super smooth and if the speed is not high enough yet, your hand will go into the device really quickly. Ow. Mm. So to be safer, I decided to skip the medium fall and go for the big one to see if that's gonna be enough for it to lock. <laughs> 
Wow, okay, it did lock. So next I tested Trango Vergo. This is a cam-based mechanism similar to Grigri, but it doesn't have a spring and its locking is based more on the angle at which the rope exits. If I'm pulling straight up, it's locking and I need to pull to the side to give slack. So I'm gonna tell you what I think about all of this at the end of this video, but for now, let's see the test. And the test was nice. It was locking instantly on every single test. And finally, the Grigri. So many of you wanna see how Grigri works. Pleasant. So yeah, no surprises here. Whoa. I'm being lifted up from 10 kilos weight. So if somebody will complain that this is not enough weight, this is moving the belayer up. Now, all of these tests were performed with a Petzl Volta, super skinny and soft rope, but I know that many of you don't climb with skinny ropes. That's why I repeated all the experiments with a used 9.5 rope to see what's gonna be oh. the difference. Oh. Smart locks with thicker ropes. So, many of the devices did perform better with thicker locks. ropes. Some still struggled. Jeez. And Revo. What? Ow. Yeah, since it doesn't work based on friction, rope diameter has no effect. So, here are the results for the first test. And these devices perform the best, with minimal or no slipping at all. Keep in mind that all of this test is very subjective. I used only two ropes and one carabiner, except that for ClickUp I used their carabiner because they require it. So all of these findings should be used as an indicator of what could happen in the worst case scenario. And as soon as you start lowering the hand, these devices have way greater chance of locking. All right, let's continue throwing all good belay practices out of the window and pushing these devices further. In multiple videos, I showed you that if you press on the Grigri cam but don't hold the rope, Grigri won't lock. And then a viewer of mine sent me this clip. Where this exact mistake happened. Luckily, the Grigri engaged in the very last moment. And then I received so many comments of people saying that this is such a stupid design that you have to press on Grigri's cam to give slack and override its safety. Well, guess what? On many other assisted devices, you also override its locking by pushing the device up, for example, to give slack. So let's see what happens if you don't have a good grip on the brake hand while you're pushing the device up. Let's use Grigri as a baseline for our tests. And here it was very easy to keep the cam depressed. So let's see how other devices will perform. Oh shit. Oh shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, wow. Shit. So yeah, if you push the device up and keep your brake hand loose, you can even burn your hand. Mm, yeah, this, this is really <laughs> not what I should be doing. And I also repeated this test with a thicker 9.5 rope and I got the same results. So if you are using any of these devices, make sure to have a good grip on the brig hand when paying slack. And obviously pay attention to your climber when you're giving slack. Now I have to add that Ederly devices are slightly more risky in this scenario because you have to wrap your thumb around the device. And pulling on the thumb has a tendency to relax your fingers. And for Vergo, if you do everything correctly and grab the rope like this when you're pressing on the cam, even if the fall happens, your hand will simply go up with the rope releasing the cam, so that's good. However, it's not very hard to grab it incorrectly and then the things can go wrong. So obviously this is a user error and you should be aware of that. 
All right, now on to the next test where I had quite a few surprises. And you know what? Sometimes I get messages like this that say it's great to see me back. Well, the reality is that I was never gone in the first place. Just making these videos takes a lot of time and effort. So I wanted to say a special thank you for my patrons and other people who are supporting me in other means. You can find those means in my website. Memes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that makes me feel that I don't have to run in this rat race of producing more and more content, more and more, and I can focus on quality. So thank you. Let's continue. In my previous video, I showed you that if you have no slack situation and don't hold the brake strand of the rope, Grigri oh. can slip. Oh shit! And I forgot to mention that that situation can happen in the case where you're taking the climber, your climber is hanging on the rope, and you're ignoring your break hand because you're cool and then you're explaining the moves to the climber and now the climber would pull on the rock that would unlock the Grigri and if he would take a fall at that moment the Grigri could slip. So I repeated the same test with other devices. On most of them I could not find a way to make them slip. The locking was instantaneous. Then Giga Jewel Oh, that's funny. Was kind of struggling a little bit to lock on this low load and skinny rope. <laughs> and Trango Vergo, I managed to make slip just a little bit if the device was initially hanging like that and the rope runs straight through it. But the slippage was very minimal and I could not repeat the same with a thicker rope. Now the device which was guaranteed Whoa. to slip was Revo. Jeez. It doesn't lock until it reaches 4 meters per second, and then it locks really hard. If we would do the math, a 3 falling object should reach 4 meters per second after falling for about 0 0.8 meters. Let's go. Oh shit. So that's definitely not 0 0.8 meters. So to investigate what's happening, I added a meter reference and tracked the speed of the falling weight. And indeed, it locked around 4 meters per second, after falling for about 1.5 meters. And the explanation was friction, which does not allow the object to fall at a free fall speed. So the takeaway, if you lose the control of the brake hand and the climber falls, he might fall more than he would expect. So overall, this mechanism is amazing as a last resort safety. However, it would be nice if it would lock instantly like other devices, no? But the biggest surprise came from ClickUps. Whoa! That was unexpected. It was extremely easy to make a ground fall in this test. Did you just see that? Wow, I definitely did not expect that. I repeated the test with original ClickUp, and huh. while on some of the tests it locked after a lot of slippage, on a third fall I got this. No. Then I tried with thicker ropes, and the results were exactly the same. That speaks for itself. Then I increased the weight to 30 kilograms, and got the same results again. And then I increased the weight to 50 kilograms. And yeah, same. So this was a very surprising result for me. And it was really easy to make both of these devices slip. And remember in the previous video I said that friction does not depend on the speed. So if the ClickUp is already slipping, it can slip faster and faster and faster and it's not guaranteed to lock. So seems like that there is not enough tension in the rope for the device to jump out of its initial socket into a locking position. And same as with the Grigri, tension in the rope only depends on what's happening on the brake side of the rope and has nothing to do with how fast the climber is falling. Here actually some of you tried to correct me by saying that indeed it does matter on how hard you pull on the rope because if you yank really hard the device will lock. Same situation with Grigri. If I pull really 
fast up, it will lock. So yes and no, and here is a quick explanation. If there is slack in the system and the climber starts falling and the rope is accelerating, at the moment of impact, the rope already has a lot of speed up. So all the dead end of the rope needs to accelerate really rapidly up to reach the same speed. And that causes a lot of tension on the brake side of the rope. However, if there is no slack initially, then both strands of the rope start accelerating at the same acceleration. And then you can have the situation that I described. So, if you have slack in the system, then most of the devices are way more likely to lock upon impact. However, it's still not guaranteed, because what can happen is that during impact, the device will lock, but then there will be a bounce which can unlock the device. And from that moment, it would be a simple no slack slide. So, which device would I prefer you to blame me? And the answer is the one that you are the most familiar with and you know its limitations. But here is my subjective risk ratings of each device. A couple of notes here that I might have not found all the dangers obviously and all of these cases that I investigated would obviously be labeled as user errors. Despite all of that, this list is not what you should base your buying decisions on and this is not how I choose my belaying devices because usability and comfort can be even greater factor for safety. For example, how easy it is to give slack, how smooth is this action. On some of the devices that you need to push up to give slack, you cannot reliably give slack if you try to use the classical slack giving technique where you're feeding the rope like so. Because if you try to do this quicker, the device will simply lock. So in a situation where you needed to take slack, and now something changed that you need to give slack back quickly, it's very likely that the device will lock and you will need to bring your right hand back to the device, press it up and only then you can continue giving slack. On contrast, some of the devices are designed to only give slack in this classical way, which also has a drawback. Let's say I'm reaching back, I'm preparing to give slack, but the situation changed, now I need to take slack. So to take, I need to bring my hand back and only then I can take slack. While some of the devices like Grigri allow you to use both methods. You can feed the slack like this and then continue feeding slack like so. And then some of the devices are really bad at taking slack. As I do this, the robe has a tendency to slide way too much. So. I would be working really hard if I need to help my climber. And that's why I will have to make another video comparing all of these other characteristics of belayed devices. Nice. I'm at day 23 and I just learned something peculiar. Why does a floaty, if you have one, sink when you flush the toilet? Why doesn't it float? <laughs> I am a huge fan of compound effect, where a small change every day can lead to a huge changes over a long period of time. And recently I discovered Brilliant.org, a platform with thousands of fun interactive puzzles and scientific courses. And my personal goal now is to massage my scientific thinking for a little bit every day for a full year. And since I've been enjoying this process a lot so far, I'm happy to recommend this to you as well. And I reached out to Brilliant.org and they agreed to sponsor this video. So if you visit visit brilliant.org slash hard is easy, you can enjoy free 30 day trial and first 200 of you can also get a discount on their premium plans. Nice. Recommended. As always, enjoy climbing.